Were you hoping for big results with your at-home chemical peel, but were a little bit disappointed? Let's talk about why. Even experienced at-home chemical peel experts who've done many chemical peels at home can make mistakes or do things that hinder their results. Even people who've done many peels have times when they wonder, why didn't I get as much peeling or flaking as I was hoping for or as I have gotten in the past. So let's talk about ways that we might accidentally sabotage our chemical peel. Number one thing to keep in mind is that your skin is always changing. Your skin is different from the last time that you did a chemical peel. If you are doing a series of chemical peels, which is recommended to get the best results, your skin may have peeled and flaked a lot with your first peel or two. And then as you proceed into your series, there's just less buildup on your skin. So you may see less peeling and less flaking. Do not mistake that for having an ineffective peel. There is a lot happening deeper into the skin where we cannot see, and that's where the collagen stimulation is happening. Secondly, remember that not everyone will frost or blanch. That is that whiteness that comes onto the surface of the skin, and it's a chemical reaction between the acid that you're putting on and the proteins in your skin. It's not the goal to achieve frosting or blanching. It's not the goal, but it is a sign that's when you need to stop applying acid. Start with one to two layers. Gradually add layers of your TCA or Jesners, maxing out at five layers, at which point you can then move to a higher percentage of acid. I have been doing TCA peels at home for several years now, and I am still using 13%. I have not graduated to the next percentage and I have not maxed out at five layers. I will usually frost around layer three. And so that's when I stop. So you may never advance. Everyone is unique. Everyone is different. So some other things to make sure you're not sabotaging your peel. Have you prepped your skin properly? You want to condition your skin to be ready to receive the acid in a very even manner. We don't want to have portions of our skin where there is not a lot of dead skin layers and then portions where there's many layers. We want to have a nice even soaking. We want to do these things to avoid having post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and so that we get a very even result as our skin is peeling off. Now, also something to keep in mind, have you properly defatted the skin, removing all traces of oil from the surface of your skin? This is an easy one to forget about. Platinum Skincare does sell a prep solution. You wanna choose the correct one based on what type of acid peel you are doing. If you don't have the prep solution from Platinum Skincare, you can simply use rubbing alcohol. 91% soak a gauze pad after you've completely removed your makeup, cleanse your skin well, then you take that alcohol all over the surface of your skin. You do not want to use a fan brush and you do not want to use a cotton gauze. That will simply soak up all your acid. Platinum Skin Care recommends using a two-ply gauze, fold it in half, fold it in half again, saturate the gauze, squeeze out the excess, and carefully, evenly apply it to your skin. So be sure that you wait five minutes before layers. We do this so that we can see if our skin will frost and then we know we're done. We also wait five minutes because we wanna give the acid time to penetrate into the skin. You're going to be amazed with the results that you get with Platinum Skin Care's Chemical Peels. Check out their Peel University. This is going to equip you with all the information and knowledge that you need so you can safely and effectively get an amazing peel and truly be delighted with the results that you get.